<laughs> and why? Well, other than you, I find those people difficult to talk about. I oh. talk to, I'm sorry. All right. You be challenging. <clears throat> other reactions? My concern is boring. I just think, really? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a knife for <clears throat> before. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how they come to their viewpoint. Okay. Yeah. Usually they've got some, or you suspect that they have a viewpoint they're right. going to be promoting. Yeah. They got there. So one of the challenges I found in writing this book was trying to do it in a way that would be inviting for people who, well, first just to get past that initial um, wall that I think a lot of folks may have when they hear Bible. If there's somebody for whom the Bible is their sacred text, they may very rightly fear that someone like me, this, this academic egghead, is going to damage or do some kind of treading all over their their sacred text. And for those for whom it is not their sacred text, I think they often worry that they're going to get preached at and and some some person's interpretation of what God means is going to be shoved down their throats. So I had to try to walk this line, but I wanted to give people an opportunity to learn about the Bible so they could make sense of these references and these conversations um, when they come across them in pop culture or, again, simply um, bumping into a person on the street, sitting next to them on the airplane, something like that. So. Um, you can't live for very long in our part of the world without having some contact with the Bible. It's everywhere. It's in churches and synagogues, of course, but it's also in Hollywood movies, fine art, novels and poetry, pop music and sitcoms, but it can be awfully hard to understand. In Bible Babble, I observe the Bible is wildly unique, yet it sits on modern bookshelves mung to its extravagant dissimilarity with its modest sp spine politely blending in a book among other books. For one thing, while it is indeed a single book, it's also a collection of many books. And just how many depends on who you're asking. Many of those books have long histories of development with the input of a number of different people or communities. The collection itself grew up over centuries, and so we find in it many different voices reflecting different times and places. The Bible didn't fall out of the sky in King James English, neither was it etched into stone tablets during a thunderstorm and handed to a tunic-clad Charlton Heston. Reading it straight through, cover to cover, hardly addresses the problem of understanding it, except to clarify the need for some help. I've tried with Bible Babble to bridge the gap between academic tomes of technical information and enthusiastic renderings of God's word for you. Somewhere between those two, I hoped I might be able to walk. I left out the scholarly jargon, but kept the best of biblical scholarship. Only about 300 pages, Bible Babel is hardly exhaustive, and I hope it's not exhausting. I sought with it simply to address the biggest questions, misconceptions, and the curiosity that people have about the Bible. I include an appendix to show readers where they can go to learn more, an idea of what they can expect to find in different kinds of resources, and how to judge any source's value and merit. I'm not particularly 